Okay, so we have covered the one sample t-test, uh, two sample t-test, and um, the next logical step is to look at uh, testing situations where you may have more than two samples in a treatment. So that's an analysis of variants uh, that we use for those uh, type of problems. And they can have multiple treatment types, um, but we start with one treatment type. So we're just sticking to our lentil variety trial. But in this case, we introduce a third sample. So we have variety A, B, and C. So that's where analysis of variance comes in uh, for these kind of problems. And it's a different test. So we calculate a new statistic. So instead of the T statistic, we have an F statistic. And as you may come to expect, that is also a signal to noise ratio. So I explain how the analysis of variance works along those lines. So it's the same general principle as we've drawn out for the t-test. We still have our sample means here of variety A, 727, variety B, 508, and then we may have a third variety here of 514. And previously we figured out how to describe the noise here as a standard error. And uh, the signal here now becomes a little bit more complicated to figure out because uh, I don't just have a difference between two observations. I have a difference between A and B and A and C and B and C. And if I add uh, more varieties, uh, I would have all kinds of combinations that I would have to consider as a signal. So the way Fisher solved this issue is really quite clever. So we figured, well, why don't we treat those means here simply as new observations? And they have a variance, right? So I have one variance. Uh, that's a variance between uh, my samples. And then I also have a variance within my samples. So we figured it's actually a little easier to work with variances rather than the standard deviations. That makes the math easier. You don't have to worry about the square roots. And it works just the same. So let's see how uh, we can calculate this. So starting with the variance between treatments. So it's really just a standard formula for a variance. I basically treat my means as individual observations and I just calculate the sum of squares here divided by n minus one. So if you were to implement this in R, it's just a variance of my sample means. And that's my variance between, uh, simple enough. And the variance within is also uh, quite straightforward. Um, uh, so in this case, it's, an, it's a weighted average. So we want to weight this by our degrees of freedom, by our sample size. Uh, so I have my variance for variety A, variance for variety B, variance for variety C. I just multiply them by the degrees of freedom, so n minus 1 for each of those samples, and then I divide by all of them. And if we do this for our particular situation, um, uh, the math actually simplifies even more because we have an equal sample size, so it would be n minus 1, 4 minus 1 is 3 times each of the variances, and then I can factor out the 3. Uh, that cancels out, so it's actually just my three variances divided by 3. So it's a mean of the variances, so the weighted mean in this case just simplifies to a straight mean. Uh, so also very simple, and that's nice. So we could go ahead and try to calculate the F statistic, but there is a flaw. So one thing we haven't gotten right, and it's a subtle but uh, important problem here, and that is that we're not quite comparing apples to apples in our signal to noise ratio. So what we really want is if the signal and the noise are the same, I'd like to have a one-to-one a -one ratio or a two-to-two -two ratio. Um, and so that is a desired property. But we don't quite get that with our calculation above. And the reason is that the central limit theorem throws a wrench into this uh, nice system. So what happens is, uh, you know, if I have a situation where my signal and the noise is the same, that that would be a situation where all my three varieties are actually exactly the same, right? So they have, let's say they have the same variance, and I'm talking about original uh, data here. So those are my little lentil plants with different uh, values. So I can describe my noise with a variance, uh, that's great. But now what happens if we calculate the signal? So we will take our sample here and we get some means here, but they will not have that same distribution, right? So that's a problem. So if we want a one-to-one -one ratio, it should be the same, but it's not. So we, we explored this with the central limit theorem. So the, those distributions will be a lot narrower, and that depends on the sample size. So if my sample size is large, this distribution of my means will actually be very, very narrow. 
and we know the relationship, um, so we figured this out previously. Uh, so if we calculate the standard error, that's the uh, standard deviation by, divided by the square root of n, or I could also express this as the square root of the variance divided by n. So for standard deviation of the means, uh, this is the this is what happens. Uh, this is my conversion. And for variances, it's just this part here. So if I have variances, that variance, if there were no effect, if they were all the same, will be just smaller by a factor of my sample size. So we essentially have to undo the central limit theorem. So because that is what happens as squared gets divided by n, I have to multiply it by n again to put those signal and noise uh, variances on the same footing so that I get my one to one one ratio. So we have to add up here times sample size. So the sample size that is used to calculate those means. And then I'm in business. Okay, so let's now see if we can get this to work in R. Okay, so we start by reading in the data. So those are our numbers from the experiment for each of those treatment plots, A, B, and C. We calculate the means of those three varieties and let's just uh, check what they are. 727, uh, 508 and 514. And um, so first we calculate the signal. Uh, that was just a variance of my means. And I multiply by 4 to undo the central limit theorem effect. So let's execute that. And uh, my noise is simply the average of the variances. So I just add them up here and divide by 3. I'll run this. And then we can look at our signal to noise ratio. And uh, that's a big number, so very good. That's certainly bigger than one. And um, I can now actually also do something similar. I can do a unit conversion from the F statistic to P value. So we'll take a look at this in a minute. So instead of the PT function, we have the PF function. And in order to get a P value, I do one minus that. And then there's also two types of degrees of freedom that we have to enter there. Um, I'm just going to skip over this for the moment. What those are, we'll, we'll look at this in a, in a minute as well. So we're going to do that unit conversion here just to see if our uh, code works. And this gives me a very small p-value with uh, seven zeros here. And um, so as a double check, I do a standard analysis of variance here. So we read our data in a standard data table format. Uh, we can look at it. Uh, there they are. So we have variety and yield in a, in a normal format. Um, we can attach it. And then we run an ANOVA. So the linear model is actually the function that uh, runs an ANOVA. Uh, yield as a function of variety. And then ANOVA gives me a table output with all the information uh, that I want in a standard ANOVA table. And so if we uh, run this, then we got all kinds of information that we'll talk about in a minute. And just as a double check here, so we got our p-value being 9.783 and 9.783, that's the same. So this is how ANOVA works. And now let's get a little bit more to the woods regarding this F statistic, uh, what the distribution is, and why we have these funny degrees of freedom 